So for this section, I'd really like to go over how breast milk is made and just um, some, some important things about that so you can really understand the whole um, process of breastfeeding. So on this model, you'll see you've got um, the breast, you've got the areola, you've got a nipple, and these little dots which you might have seen on your own are Montgomery glands lands and they actually produce a little moisture so it's going to help some uh, some um, oils and things like that to help with that but then on the inside this is where you're going to be finding um, all of the different uh, ducts and then the um, alveoli are where the milk's being made so you've got ducts that say like between five and 12 ducts that come out the nipple. So it's like a shower head. It's not like a, a stream, just one um, stream. So you've got a whole bunch of them. And the ducts actually come up into the nipple. And then back here is where the milk's being made. So you've got these alveoli, which have the milk being made, and they actually have muscles that go around each little kind of grape-like figure and that is used to kind of contract and push that milk out. So after the baby's born, you um, deliver the placenta and your hormone now, the uh, prolactin levels and the oxytocin levels are going to increase. So your prolactin actually produces milk and your oxytocin pushes it out. So it's really um, important to have uh, those hormones. That's why some of the um, illnesses that affect hormones or medications that affect hormones can affect breastfeeding. So, um, and it all works on supply and demand after the first week. The first week you've got the hormones helping, but it's all getting the baby to the breast, getting the baby, um, telling the body to make more. So as the baby comes to the breast, there's uh, milk taken out, that's that demand process. And then your body says, okay, I'm gonna get up to this. And they, they, it produces that milk. So that is the best way to get that milk going, okay? The more the baby sucks at the breast, the more milk you're gonna make. So, are you worried? Women say, oh my goodness, I've got such small breasts, I can't feed the baby. No, that is not true. The size of the breast has nothing to do with the amount of milk that you're gonna make. Okay, what matters is that mammary tissue on the inside, okay? Large breasts have more adipose tissue, and so that's not gonna produce milk, but the mammary tissue will, okay? So a small breast does not mean less milk. A large breast does not mean more milk. Now, a large breast might have more storage so that the baby doesn't feed as frequently, but that has nothing to do with the ability to make that milk. And most women make more milk than their babies ever need, so keep that in the back of your mind. So when the breast milk is first um, there after delivery, you have colostrum. Colostrum is a very special milk. We call it liquid gold for a reason. It is so concentrated. It has everything that your baby needs in such a tiny little bit. You produce about a teaspoon per feeding, and you've been producing it since you were five months pregnant, so you're not going to feel any changes in the breast in the first couple days. That's normal, okay? But it's really easy for your baby to digest. They, um, it coats their stomach. It's high in protein. It has all all the sugars that baby needs and it also has a little bit of a laxative which helps push out that stool which is going to be really beneficial and then in that first week you've got um, a, a first two one to two weeks you've got a transitional milk so you've got colostrum over that first week that but you also start getting that mature milk that's mixing with it so it tends to increase in volume so that's where you're going to start feeling that fullness and we'll discuss that a little bit more with breast care later um, but then the mature milk that is usually after the 10th day or so and the mature milk is what you're gonna have the rest of the time that you're breastfeeding. Now, the consistency of it will change depending on the time of day, depending on uh, um, many different factors, but there usually is a much higher water content in the 
first part of the feeding, which we'll, you'll hear some people say for milk, and then the back part of the feeding or the end of the feeding is like dessert because it's really rich. It has all that, um, so it's really important to let your baby feed as long as they want. So, um, the, uh, we told you it has everything the baby needs, but it's also special for your baby. If your baby comes a little bit early, your breast milk is actually specific for that baby, okay? So a 34-week baby's mom's milk is completely different than a full-term baby because they need so much more calories in that um, little bit, and it really does help. So your body actually does that. Um, there's antibodies in it, there's probiotics, and prebiotics, um, you've got all the water, your baby does not need any juices or any water even in the summer months. So the, the breast milk has all of that. So it's really important that beginning, you get those early feedings in, get in that stimulation going. If you're having problems getting that latch, you're gonna call somebody. We have lactation at Stafford Hospital every day and we'll come around and we'll see you and we'll help you if you're having any problems getting the baby latched on and then um, your baby's gonna be able to take that milk out and it's gonna help you produce more. So you want that um, emptying of the breast. Um, more stimulation increases it. So eight to 12 feedings in 24 hours is a normal uh, amount of time to uh, frequency of feeds. And so the, um, if you have like eight feedings, that kind of keeps your milk at the same level. If you increase and you have more than eight, it's gonna increase. And if you have less than that, it actually decreases it. So that's a natural weaning process. But if you're in like the second month and you're only feeding like six times a day and you're worried that you're not making enough milk and the baby's not growing, get the baby to the breast more frequently. You're gonna be producing more. How can um, formula affect breastfeeding? In the first two weeks, it's really important that you put the baby just to the breast. If you are giving a formula supplement to a healthy baby who doesn't have a medical reason for it, and you're not pumping, your body doesn't know the baby had that milk. So now you run into this um, where your body's trying to make the lower supply, and it does. It makes that supply, but it doesn't make what every, everything that your baby needs. So it's really important to stay away from form, formula supplements, it's um, pacifiers. Pacifiers are actually good and the doctors want you to start using that after the first few weeks, but in the first couple weeks, it is, um, can, it can hold off a of feeding. So if you're not getting the baby to that breast as often, you're not gonna be making as much. So it can prevent a low milk supply. Um, now it is, um, known to be able to help in some of the studies they are showing to help uh, prevent SIDS. So you do want to use that after the first couple weeks or so. Um, but breastfeeding is also known to be able to lower the risk of SIDS also. The other thing that I've been seeing recently is moms are getting these pumps from their insurance companies, which is wonderful, but you don't need to pump in the first two weeks. If you're pumping and your baby is feeding, you're telling your body to make enough milk for two babies. So you don't want that. That's actually a problem, <laughs> okay? So oversupply is, is gonna cause some problems for you. Um, so that's, that's really, uh, you want to stay away from the formula, you want to stay away from the pacifiers, and you want to stay away from the pumping in the first two weeks, two to three weeks. That's the most important time to get your baby to the breast on demand. And that's all I have for this section. The next section we'll do will be on positioning and latching, which is going to be a lot of hands-on stuff so that you'll be able to feel comfortable when your baby's born.